This episode is brought to you by PopCultureZone.com. For all your cleaning and pressing needs and as low as $5.99 a book, be sure to check them out. With over 8,000 books cleaned and pressed, PopCultureZone.com. What's going on, guys? Brian Jack with some men's comics, and we are back with another top 10 back issues for you to be on the lookout for. There's a great list that we come out with every week for you to find value at add these books to your collection at any time. That's right. You guys know the list, you know the series, and you know that these books still have room to grow. So let's get into it because we've got 10 great books to talk about this week. Coming at the bottom of the list this week, we get Marvel Super Action number 18. This is a great reprint. Some people are aware, but I think there's also some people that aren't. That's why we have it on the list. Yeah, this book goes in cycles. You see it get attention like every few years as more and more collectors come into the hobby and they become aware of this book. Back in the Silver Age and the Golden Age, you didn't see reprints or, or second prints. You saw these reprints. And they didn't reprint the issue directly. They would have these series like Marvel Super Action, which would reprint and retell these stories. So here you get the first appearance of Vision. And it essentially is like a second print. So these are books that kind of follow a trend that we've talked about where the first appearance has been priced out of a lot of people's kind of collecting habits. Um, also, there is no second print. And we've talked about how we really have a belief that second prints are going to continue to become more and more popular um, within the hobby. And this book is essentially a second print. And this is a character with a lot of legs because we know we're getting a Disney Plus series. There's a lot of attention on the series. And the series seems like it's going to lead us in a lot of different directions within the MCU. Yeah, and this is also a book like when Age of Ultron was announced and we heard about Vision News. This is a book that caught some heat then. But since then, it's kind of gone down. Might have seen some residual heat with the show that you announced. But either way, still a great time to pick this book up. Then at number nine, following that same trend, we get Marvel Tales number 252, which also reprints that first story of Morbius, right? That's right. You get the first appearance of Morbius and a brand new cover and one that kind of flips the script and you kind of see it from Morbius's perspective. Um, I really like the cover. I really think, again, that this is a, a book that you're getting a reprint of a book that there is a second print that was done much, much later for the first appearance of Morbius. So it's not quite a second print, maybe a third print. But I like the cover switch. Uh, again, you didn't you didn't see that back then. Uh, the second print for the uh, original ASM book is just one of those silver cover books. So here you get a new cover. Um, also, unlike the previous book that we talked about, that Vision book, the Vision book had hit like forty dollars in the past raw when Brian you spoke of when we first got Vision's introduction into the MCU. Now this book. We haven't even seen this book really scratch the surface of the collecting radar. Um, I've actually posted about this book several months ago that it was a book that I regularly look for in dollar bins. I think that's the level of this book right now. This is a dollar bin digging book. And because of that, I think that's a good reason to talk about it on this list. Now, again, this is not a top 10 list of the hottest books this week that next week it's already passed you by. We're giving you buying opportunities. So this is a cheap book that I think has a good chance when this Morbius movie comes into play being five and 10 times more valuable than what it's sitting at right now. Yeah, and you speak that, about that Morbius movie. We also had this on our top five Morbius back issues, which is a separate video for books that tie into that upcoming movie release. We'll put a link to that in the description and a card up above right now for you to take a look at that if that's something you're interested in. But for now, we're going to continue on the list. Then coming in at number eight, we get that silencer number one from DC Comics. This is the book I was picking up a lot not too long ago. I still, I still think this character has a lot of room to grow. Plus, you got Fantastic Story by Dan Abnett and Fantastic Art by John Romita Jr. Yeah, so when this character came out part, as part of the New Age of Heroes DC initiative, um, it was clearly the winner of the group. Um, and we've talked about some of 
these new age heroes and the fact that like they kind of got put on the shelf right so they're not being paid attention to they're down um but the reader buzz for the series it kind of stuck all the way through we saw the very last issue of the series on the bolo list because readers were demanding that we talk about it and anytime a new character appeared in that series it was one that got the secondary market's attention so that really tells me that there's legs for this character and maybe the biggest negative you can say is that the character already appeared on a television show appearing on a few episodes of Arrow, um, and it didn't really do much. But again, CW spec, especially at the time when when the character finally did show up on the CW late into the series, had already kind of fizzled in general. Uh, I, I think, if anything, the fact that there was kind of so much buzz around the character and the fact that people thought the character was pretty cool on the show only shows me that DC could possibly use this character again in the future, whether or not it's in a part of their HBO Max program, which I think is going to be even more elevated and get more attention than the CW does, or in a future uh, DC Extended Universe movie release. Um, either way, I like this character. While no one's paying attention, you got to zig while others lag. Yeah, and I like what you bring up, especially with HBO Max or movies down the road, because you never know, they might position that character replace someone else, make it part of the Justice League, make it part of some other team that you wouldn't normally have it in there. And then when they do, it hits a brand new audience. Next thing you know, they're going back to look what's going on. They find these later issues and you've already picked it up and that's why it's on the list. Number seven on the list, we get Dark Horse Presents Annual 1998. This is a great issue because it's got a good first appearance in it, right? That's right. This is the first appearance of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now, this is an often debated first appearance um, because a lot of people look at Buffy the Vampire Sl Slayer number one and have often pointed to that as the first appearance. But the thing is, that is the first appearance of the character that appeared on television. This is the first appearance of the character in general. And a lot of you may not realize that even before there was a television series, there was a feature film. So this is the first appearance of the character in general. I think it's undervalued um, that we've seen that there's kind of a cult following for the Boom Studios uh, series that's going on right now that's given us multiple other series and miniseries that kind of spawned from it. And on top of it, we've talked about the fact that this is now own, a property owned by Disney that we got to feel like at some point they're going to do something with, especially with that streaming service platform, kind of just begging for content. It's only a matter of time before we see Buffy show up on Disney Plus or in some other form or fashion. So I think kind of the time is now to really get your hands on this book. And at number six this week, we get Doctor Strange number one. This is the 1974 series. This is a book that when Doctor Strange, the first movie was coming out, it garnered some heat because a lot of people can't pick up those strange tales. So they're collecting up the next best thing, which is a trend we talk about a lot on this list. And it's kind of gone down right now, but it's still one that is a classic issue. Classic is classic. And it's not cheap, but very affordable at the same time. Yeah, see, you mentioned a lot of things right there, Ryan. And they're all why this book is on the list. Now, I think if you guys keep watching this show, eventually you're going to be able to predict some of these books just based on the fact that we are continuing to hammer home on some of these trends. Now, if you pay attention to the prices of Doctor Strange's first appearance in Strange Tales, you will see that this book has been astronomically growing. I mean, a lot of people, and I'm talking about smart people with a lot of money, are putting a lot of money into that book. And that tells me that there's a lot of faith in this upcoming feature film. We're going to introduce horror into the MCU, and we're also going to start looking at other universes, and that could bring in uh, a lot of other cast of characters. Think Spider-Verse, think X characters, think fantastic characters, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of reason to be very bullish about Doctor Strange. And admittedly, I wasn't the big fa biggest fan of the Doctor Strange film or his some of his appearances in the other movies, but... I still am a believer that this franchise can really go somewhere, similar to the way Thor did with a tone change going into Ragnarok. Um, and so if you look at this and you say, well, what's the next best issue after the first appearance? Now, obviously, then we're talking about Strange Tales 169, which features the first Doctor Strange titled comic. Great book, but that also has become very expensive um, because that was kind of the book that everybody jumped to when they couldn't get that first appearance. So now I really think Doctor Strange number one, the first number one issue in his own solo series is really the one to pay attention to, the one to get, because like you mentioned, it's down right now. While the other books have moved up, this book has seemingly 
kind of dropped. It's gotten less attention. And I just think that the, the hardcore investors are going with the big books. The casual buyer isn't grabbing this one. So a savvy investor can grab up this one. And when everyone else comes around to it, you'll be sitting on it. And I think they surely will once we come around talking about that future Doctor Strange film. So we're starting to get to the bottom of the list this week and coming at number five, we get static number one. Yeah, now this book has already caught heat this week with reports that Milestone Comics is going to be getting back together and releasing some more titles under the DC Comics imprint. But we've heard that before, and that is not the reason why I'm bullish on this property. This has been a popular character since the 90s. I think no matter what happens with Milestone Comics, I think Static is bigger than that brand. It's the breakthrough character that they had that we've already seen popular in an animated series. It's already branched out into the rest of the DC universe. And I think that this is a character going forward that is a character that DC can really lean on. Um, I've been shocked watching Black Lightning that we haven't seen Static show up. I thought that that was kind of going to be the go-to move in the CW, but I thought, well, maybe they have bigger plans for Static. Either way, this has been a character that's been popular. And I got to be honest with you, I know this is a crazy comparison. Um, it kind of has a Miles Morales feel where it, the books hovered around a certain price. And from time to time gets hot and raises in value. And then when people aren't paying attention to it, it drops back down a bit, but never really goes below a certain level. And it's just waiting for the right vehicle to explode. We've seen that happen now with Miles, and it seems like there's no turning back. Um, I think that this is a book that has that potential. Yeah, this is a book that has had option, whether it's animated, live action buzz for probably about the last eight years or so. And you always see those cycles come and go, right. but it's a great book to pick up nonetheless, right? Yeah. Yeah. Get ahead of the game. Do not be reactionary. Coming at number four, this is a character that garnered a lot of buzz, especially after the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And we're talking about Howard the Duck number one. This is the 2015 series. Yeah. And the thing about this book is Howard the Duck got really popular, so much so that they brought back the character with his own series. And that's not even the reason why people are buying this book. There's an animated series coming, right? There is, but that's not reason <laughs> people are buying this book. It's not the character on the cover. It's not anything about the inside story. It's the little blurb on the bottom of the book and the backup story that's in this book that gives us the first appearance of Gwenpool. Now, Gwenpool was a silly amalgamation character that was done for a series of Deadpool variant covers. And it was during Secret Wars, and it took off. The variant became a $100 book and was the clear winner. And Deadpool was already really popular with a female demographic. So adding a female version with that white and pink costume, it struck a chord next level. Cosplay, um, fan art, everywhere. So much so that Marvel decided to do this kind of test run with a backup character. Now, this started a whole debate about what's the first appearance of the character. Is it a uh, variant cover or is it when the character appears in an actual book? You can make that argument all day. I don't put a lot of stock into the variant cover. I think it's cool, but it's already expensive. This is the book to get. This is a first appearance. This has become more and more popular, about a 10 to $15 book but one that you can find regularly for cheap. There's a second print, as well as a second print variant. The second print variant is a sketch cover of the one in 25 variant of the first print, which features Gwenpool on the cover. That goes for astronomical money, and it's probably not an investable book. That's one of those limited rare variants that's tough to get. I'd pay attention to the first print, I'd pay attention to the second print, and I'd pay special attention to that second print variant. Either way, Gwenpool won't go away. People think it's a silly character, people think that this series is silly, but the popularity of the character continues to grow, and they're eventually going to have to do something, and I honestly wouldn't be shocked if we didn't see Gwenpool in an animated movie, in a team-up uh, TV series like... Uh, we've seen her with the West Coast Avengers or one day show up in a Deadpool film herself. Then hitting us at the number three spot this week, we get that first series of G.I. Joe and Transformers. We're talking about that Marvel number one series, issues one through four. Yeah, now we've talked several times about different reasons why Transformers and G.I. Joe and Power Rangers and all of these Hasbro properties, we believe in them. 
not only are they hitting on nostalgia from a certain time period that's in play with the key demographic who are spending money right now, but also the fact that there's going to be a shared universe coming from All Spark Productions and Paramount Pictures. Well, one thing that I think is being totally overlooked by the comic buyers is this miniseries, which is the first crossover between G.I. Joe and Transformers. We, we know that this is coming on film. We've already got movies scheduled. We just don't know how the crossover is going to play out. Once it happens, I have no doubt that people are going to come running to these issues because that's what people do when there's movie information. They go and look for any event that takes place in a film, the corresponding comic to go with it. A savvy buyer who gets ahead of the market can pick this up for pennies on the dollar of what this is sure to be going for because this has always been kind of cult popular but never really been secondary market popular you can pick up complete sets on ebay dirt cheap yeah not to mention you talk about the all spark productions right or the shared movie universe coming up through paramount but also look at hasbro in general right now like a lot of their new releases, they're putting out a lot of new Transformer toys and a lot of new G.I. Joe toys, and they're not just for kids. We're talking about like the Declassified series. We're talking about sideshow statues, Transformers, and a lot of people love it. They grew up in that area, and now those people have the disposable capital. <laughs> they're, they're spending money on it. Absolutely. Then at our next to top spot, coming in at number two, we get Amazing Spider-Man number 238. We get that big first appearance of Hobgoblin. Now, this is maybe the expensive book of the week or the most obvious, the duh book of the week. But there's a lot of reason to believe that this is a book that really could gain in value in the coming years. First off, it's important to know that there's a Mark the Jewelers insert within a lot of these books, as well as some tattoos. If removed, drastically change the price on the secondary market of this book. So you have kind of a variant version as well as needing to know whether or not those tattoos are intact when you're making a purchase that can really affect whatever the value of this book is. And because of that, I think that the more rare and mint copies and complete copies of this book are going to be the most sought after. Now, also, forget all that. Just talking about the character Hobgoblin. This is a cool character, a character that has kind of consistently garnered attention, even when there's really no reason for it. The character wouldn't be being used in, in the current Amazing Spider-Man series. The character wouldn't be in any sort of animated series or live action. Really no reason for people to be paying attention or talking about the character. And the book would show spikes. And it has shown that people love this character and love this book. And because of that, it's really only a matter of time. I think that the previous spider-man series never got far enough into their kind of storytelling before the movie started to fall off to get to a point where hobgoblin could show up i think that will change because with the mcu we're not going to get three movies and then a new spider-man reboot tom holland is part of the future plans and i think there's a better chance than ever that we see hobgoblin show up and if you think the gains that this book has shown or the up and down spikes and the popularity that this book has have been something to note so far. You haven't seen anything yet if we start seeing the pumpkin head show up in the MCU. Yeah, and it's funny you mentioned about the Mark Jewelers and the tattoos. We had a member in Simple Men's Comics community on YouTube videos from mentioning this issue before, hit us up looking for one of those issues. He says he couldn't find one with the tattoos in it. I believe he did end up finding one over at my comic shop. So kudos to that, and I'm glad. It was like one of his grail books. Coming in at number one this week, we kind of talked a little bit about this on this past week's Three Up, Three Down, but we have that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles micro series, but we're talking about Raphael number one. Yeah, we talk about how these lists are done weeks in advance, but every now and again, something happens that dictates that we make a quick edit, and that happened this week with this book. When Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 105 came out, and really had some groundbreaking events happen that got major news from places like Newsarama and CBR, but didn't seem to get secondary market attention from those like speculation and collector sites. We knew that there was some buying opportunity right now with these characters. And what happened in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 105, you ask? Well, the Ninja Turtles, who have five members, started an official clan called the Splinter Clan, and they added a sixth member to the team the long-standing 
ally, Alloplex. And Alloplex first appeared here with this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles micro series, Raphael. She's a long standing rival of Raphael. And with issue number 105, became a new love interest. So we had a lot of reason to kind of pay attention to this character. She even got her bandana to join the Turtles. She is the green bandana. I don't want to say turtle, but I'll say member of the Ninja Turtles team. Um, and so this is a major, major event. And this book is tough. This book is from 2011. It dates back to when T IDW first got the license to do these books. This is a has a cover A and a cover B. Cover A and cover B both regularly go for as much as $20. And there's a 1 in 10 incentive, which is an absolute ghost, a sketch cover. This is a book to be on the lookout for and buying right now. That's why it's got the number one spot because it's only going to be a matter of time before those savvy speculators figure out what's going on with this book. And we get the same thing that happens with Jenica, happen with Alloplex. So you get a chance to be first to bat. Yeah, I believe there's a, there's a jetpack exclusive for that issue as well. There is, yes. So there it is, guys. There's our top 10 for this week. Always let us know in the comments, which of these books do you have? And look out, because very soon we will have volume two of that back issue ebook, right? Absolutely. Only $1.95 for volume one right now on simplemanscomics.com. 100 great books, plus our insight, our takes on trends and where the market is going. Volume two is coming soon, so be on the lookout. Simplemanscomics.com. So do us a favor, click the thumbs up button. And if you're new here and haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. We do a lot of comic pop culture content on this channel. So if you click that bell, you'll always be notified when new content drops. This is Brian Jack with Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys in the next video. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus.